The Glutton, written by A.K. Blakemore and published by Scribner in October of 2023, with a snippet read by Richard Coombs. Available for checkout right now at the Alice Pendleton Library. To my esteemed colleague, Citizen Dr. Jean-Pierre Dubois, it is with deep and long-held admiration that I write to you, although the circumstances that cause me to do so are strange indeed. Believing time to be of the essence in this matter, I pray that my brevity causes no affront. Four days ago, a person of exceedingly poor and alarming appearance arrived at our hospital and was placed under my care. The name he uses for himself is Tarer, and he says that he is a soldier and fought for the Republic in the North. He also asserts a past acquaintance with you, Citizen Dr. Dupois, though I can scarcely give credence to his account of himself. He can be no older than twenty-five by his looks. He claims, and indeed truly appears, to suffer greatly from some ailment that defies all diagnosis. His abdomen is distended, and his skin is yellowed and atrabilious, as one sees in cases of severe anonition, and he is convulsed by pains that render him unable to stand and often unable to speak. He claims these pains are caused by a golden fork that he swallowed whole, and that is, and here I quote the patient's vivid self-diagnosis verbatim, tearing him apart inside. Although manual examination of the patient revealed no such foreign body, nor any other obvious obstruction to the gut. His breathing has become labored, and he will now take neither food nor water. I believe he will die soon, and so does he. My sense of fraternal charity for this pitiful creature has overcome my natural temerity, and I am compelled to relay his desperate wish to see you and speak with you, knowing full well that your work may detain you in Paris. Although this poor terrain may be beyond our healing art, he is certainly beyond mine, I believe it would ease his troubled and swift departing spirit to see you once again, and bid you come, if you are able, as soon as you might. Your humble servant, Citizen Doctor Alexis L. Tissier. They look like grave figures, the way they move along the dim corridors between the dim rooms. It is because their long habits hide the movements of their limbs and the muted shuffle of their feet on the bare stone tiles. Because their long habits disguise the movements of their limbs and the muted shuffle of their feet on the bare stone tiles, they look like they are gliding, as though it is some outside force that compels them along the dim corridors and between the dim rooms. They nod to one another when they pass. Sister Perpetu supposes she must look the same way they do, because she wears the same long habit and the same white coronet, with the wide wings on top of her head, she supposes she must also look like it is some outside force compelling her along the dim passage and between the dim rooms, which she supposes in a sense is true. Love? God? Love and God being one and the same, of course. There are crosses nailed to the walls to show it. There are sisters gliding along the halls in their white coronets to show it. It is, or was, the day of Autumn Crocus. It was raining outside, heavily, the last time she was able to look out a window, drowning the sooted cornice work and the shy evening lights of the city. There are crosses nailed to the walls, but there are very few windows. The windows that there are, on this floor of the hospital, are very small and barred. You can really lose your sense of time in this place. She knows what time it is now, though. She knows it is near midnight, because she has been called to the place where Sister Amandine watches the patient who must always be watched. Sister Amandine is sitting upright in a chair in the corridor, with a prayer book open in her black lap. You mustn't fall asleep, says Sister Amandine. Why not? asks Sister Perpetu. Always these stupid questions, says Sister Amandine. Because he must always be watched. But you're looking at your book, not watching him at all. Sister Amandine closes the prayer book and presses her lips tightly together. The patient has been given laudanum, she says, for pain. Now he is sleeping. And in any case, he is bound to his bed. Why? asks Sister Perpetu. That was what I meant, she says. I meant, why are such precautions necessary? Citizen Dr. Tissier says he is certainly dying. Sister Amandine leans forward slowly in her chair, 
red, big-knuckled hand still sandwiched around her little prayer book. You mean you have not heard? she asks. I have heard, Sister Perpetue says, things that could hardly be true, could hardly be true if they were said of any man alive. 